Hello, Big Tube. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Fan Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and I'm going to stay behind the camera today. I've just got a tiny bit of filming time, and I'm in my utility room because I've been promising you a bookshelf tour this month of my middle grade books. So a few days ago, I brought this card table in here. That is temporary. That does not normally sit in front of the door, but it works right now because... That's the door, that side door goes out uh, onto our side street, and invariably, if Emily gets it in her head to go to the car, she will open the door and walk towards the car and let the dogs out, so we do usually put up some kind of barricade, although it's usually not that table. It's usually back behind me in the kitchen, we will just block the, use the dining table to block the door to get in here. So uh, she usually doesn't even come in this room, like I said, unless she just gets it in her head that she's going to go to the car. That's neither here nor there. I'm just explaining why there's a table in front of the door in case you worry that that's a fire trap. We have plenty of other exits to our house. And for right now, until we can get a new door with a keypad, that's just something that we're dealing with because of Emily's exceptionality, which is autism. Okay, so back to what I'm doing here. I've been promising you a middle grade bookshelf tour. Now, last year I did a whole shelf tour of my Cozy Mysteries. You can see those, my Cozy Mystery Collection are on those two shelves there that you can see. And above that, I just put my Amish books back there. That's not all of them. I've gotten such a large collection now, they won't fit, and I've got to figure out some sort of new arrangement. Um, farther on up top are my guidepost books and a few of my Annie's books. Anyway, what's on the table are some of the books that I took off of these shelves so that I could just organize and make sense of what I have, make sure everything's cataloged, and I thought I would just bring you along on the journey. Like I said, this is my utility room. There's the washer and dryer. That's with the cat food dish. They have to eat up there because of the dogs. So I brought this exercise ball in here. I'm going to sit on that while I show you a little more in depth of what's on these shelves. But for me, it works best if I start at the bottom and go up. Now, the very bottom are just some audiobooks and some of my TBR jar books. So I'm not dealing with that today. But on the next shelf up, that is generally where I keep fantasy books. I have adult fantasy on the left. I've only got a couple of authors that I've collected. And then there are some YA fantasy. And I have really a hard time distinguishing between... YA and middle grade, sometimes, you know, it really just depends on the person. So I'm just going to show you all my fantasy books, whether they're adult or YA or middle grade, because really a lot of the ones that are YA slash middle grade could be read by either age group. So, you know, it, it really is, it doesn't matter. Uh, I have a few there on the table stacked up that are either standalones or I don't have the whole series and I'll go through and show you what I've read and what I haven't read and really of the fantasy type series that I have I've read a lot of what I own and I have all I have owned some that I don't have anymore that I have passed on to other people like my great nephew I've given him the Guardians of Gahul series, I've read all those, and the other series by that author, Wolves of the Beyond. I used to own all of those, but I've read them, and I went ahead and passed those on to him. And there was another series I gave him, oh, by Suzanne Collins, the Gregor, Gregor the Overlander series. That is a really fun series. So anyway, um, this is what I have. There's also another shelf in the living room that are Katie's books, and then she has another bin in her closet of books that I'm not going to go into. It's mostly all the Rick Riordan books that we have because she doesn't have a bookshelf in her room. She's been shopping and hasn't found just the right one that matches the rest of her furniture, that's the right height and exactly what she wants that will fit in the space she has left and all of that. So she'll probably graduate and move away before we ever find a bookshelf that fits exactly what she wants to have. But anyway, let's just take a look. Now I'm going to sit on this exercise ball and I'm going to just start with this bottom shelf. So for this video, we're going to talk about what's there and then a few things from up here. I'm going to move to that shelf and, and go ahead and fill it up. So today, if you're not interested in fantasy, dystopian, I don't think there's any really science fiction. 
that's pretty much what we're going to talk about today. So if you're not interested in that, then come back for my next one where we'll talk about some of my other middle grade series. I have a few YA contemporary, so we'll do all the contemporary stuff in the next video. Okay, so let's start with the adult fantasy. I have several books here by my friend Jack Castle. You may recall that earlier this year I helped him out with some copy editing of his newest book that's not out yet, so I don't have my own copy of it. It's going to be part of the Stranger World series. Uh, Stranger World starts with Stranger World. Second book is Stranger Realm, then Stranger Tides, and then Stranger Origins is a prequel. So I'll show you those real quick. That is Stranger World, Stranger Realm, Stranger Tides, Stranger Origins. And then this is his only book that I have not ever read. And he says it's kind of creepy. And he, him knowing my reading taste a little bit <laughs> said that I probably shouldn't read it. I will read it at some point. But this is the only book I own by him that I have not read yet. And then his other standalones, his very first book that he that was published is Europa Journal. This one is really good. It's a uh, science fiction fantasy adventure. And then White Death is kind of a, on the horror side of things, but um, I thought it was really good. It's uh, It takes place in Alaska, and he used to live there and was a policeman and was actually, uh, he actually kind of did have a, a face-off with a polar bear. So that sort of inspired that story. And then another kind of, I don't know what, how you would describe this one, um, Bedlam Lost. It's not really horror. It's just kind of creepy, as I recall. And then behind those, I've got my Robin Hobb collection. So let me just stack these up, and I'll show you. I have just about every Robin Hobb book except the third book in the Fits and Fool series. That's the second book, Fool's Quest. And I think I have the first one in paperback that's it down there fool's assassin i'm not going to take all of these out but uh some of these i've read and i'll show you mostly i've been just reading them on audio ship of magic that's not a great copy um well i should try to put them in order i wish that i had matching editions ship of destiny is book two no three and then mad ship that's the um second book in the live ship traders. So that's a really nice copy. If I could ever find a decent copy of the first book. So Ship of Destiny is the third one. Um, I would get a hardcover of that. If I can ever find one. So then I've also read the first uh, trilogy in the Elderlings. Assassin's Apprentice. Royal Assassin. And Assassin's Quest. I have listened to those on audio. So now, hopefully this year, I will get to the Rainwild Chronicles. Dragon Keeper, Dragon Haven, City of Dragons, Blood of Dragon. And then um, the... What is this one called? The next trilogy, I think, is the Tawny Man trilogy. I have Fool's Errand, Golden Fool, and then Fool's Fate. I'm not sure if I told you them in the right order. Yeah, I did. That's book three. And I'm just going to stick that back up there for now. I'll fix that later. Um, those two are not related. They're not Robin Hood books. And then this trilogy, Soldier Son, I don't think is part of the Elderlings. And I'm not sure of the order of these. Shaman's Crossing, Renegade's Magic, and Forest Mage. And I have been able to find most all of these at thrift stores few. I think I got it used bookstores and I'm excited to get through all of her books. I first learned about her from Samantha. Oh goodness. Now I can't even think of her channel name. Uh, she's been on booktube a long time and she's a huge Robin Hobb fan and did a big read along of Robin Hobb books quite a while back. And that's how I got interested in those and have just been continuing to collect them. So, that is my Robin Hobb collection. Over here, I've got an Orson Scott card, Ender Companion, 
written by Jack, Jake Black. I have not read that. And I've got The Road by Cormac McCarthy. I have not read that one of these days. I'll get to that. Get these back in here. Oh, dear. At least I'm close to the floor so I can pick these up. Okay, so then I'm in the process of reading these books right now. Actually, I actually I just finished them now that I said that. Um, the Testing was a Sunshine State book several years ago. These are by Joelle Charbonneau. And I read Independent Study last month. And then this month, I read Graduation Day. In fact, this was in there on my staging shelf, but I brought it in here just for this video because this is where it usually lives. And then this is a trilogy I read back when I first started BookTube, and I really enjoyed it. It doesn't get a whole lot of love on BookTube. I think uh, I heard some negative reviews of it. I'm not really sure why. It's very clean, and maybe it was too tame for some people. I don't know. But it's matched, crossed, and reached. I really, really enjoyed that trilogy. I have some of the Thursday Next series by Jasper Ford. I have not read them. They're actually down here in my... Um, down there in my TBR jar bin. Um, this one I don't know anything about. I picked this up at a library sale, Shades of Grey. That's the only other Jasper Ford book I have other than that. This one I have read, Heartless by Marissa Meyer. We have the the whole Lunar Chronicles series. Katie's read all of them, but she has not read this. And I have read about half of the Lunar Chronicles. It's on my to-read list. This I got for free at... Booknet Fest. The first year I ever went was the second one. Patrick Ness and the Ocean Was Our Sky. It's a an art copy. And this is a, another companion book. This one is for the Left Behind series, which I have finished the series. But this is a really interesting looking book. It's um, just kind of mixed media, sort of, and talks about the characters and the setting and all of that. So... I, um, I'm definitely interested in continuing their, I think it's a spinoff series of that series, and I do want to read this. I have a few companion books, and I've read a few and have not read some, but I sort of feel like I'm not really completely done with the series unless I've read companion books, if they're available. All right, let me pause this and shuffle things around a little bit. Okay, I shifted these over for a second. I will talk about all the Disney-related stuff in just a minute. What is behind there, though, is the Kiss of Deception, or um, what is that series called? <laughs> it's a trilogy, The Remnant Chronicles. I have read all of these. I listened to a couple of them on audio, or maybe just one of them, and I read the others in print. This is just a fantastic book. So well-written, so, so well-done. Uh, Kiss of Deception, The Heart of Betrayal, and The Beauty of Darkness. I really enjoyed those. And then I've got the whole Aragon series, which I have also read. I've listened to them on audio. We've got Aragon, Eldest, Brissinger, and Inheritance. And somewhere I have a companion book for the, this series that I have not read. I saw it floating around here when I was shuffling things around, and now I'm not sure where it went off to. But anyway, I haven't read the companion book for that series either, but I have finished that series. So the Aragon series I think is really good. It's the, is it Allegasia, I think is the place. I'm, I'm trying to think of the official name of the series. It's by Christopher Paolini. And I think he has started a spinoff series of it now. And I did read Tales from Allegasia, which I think is also kind of a a sequel to the series. I don't know if it's going to if there's going to be any more of those or not, but it basically starts out it's about a a, a boy who has who finds a dragon egg and it hatches and then he's got a dragon and then he is sort of the chosen one to bring peace and stability to his land. That's kind of the story in a nutshell. And then let's look now at the Disney-related books that I have. So I'm going to slide these back over here. I have not read either of these books. A Whole New World by Liz Braswell. 
a twisted tail. This one uh, has something to do with Aladdin. And then As Old as Time, same author, also a twisted tail. It says, What if Belle's mother cursed the beast? Interesting. What was this one? What if Aladdin had never found the lamp? I think there's more of these. These are just the only two that I have. I think I got those at a Scholastic Warehouse sale. So I have finished reading the original Kingdom Keepers series. There's also a Segway book, book 7.5, that leads into this uh, Return spinoff series. I have not started this. Uh, I have books one and two. There is a third book, and I think that's the only one that, I, um, that I'm still missing. I believe the series is done. The Return series, the first book is called Disney Lands. These are by Ridley Pearson. Book two is Legacy of Secrets. So, um, I don't know, do you want to see the covers of all of these? Kingdom Keepers book one, Disney After Dark. I've read that a couple of times. I think I listened to all of these on audio. Disney at Dawn is Kingdom Keepers book two. This is just a fantasy series that takes place in and all around Disney. There's even a couple that take place on the Disney Cruise Line. It goes through several years, and now some of them are even very dated because of the attractions that it mentions that aren't there anymore. Disney in Shadow is book three. Book four, Power Play. Oh, see, and there's the hat that used to be in front of the Chinese Theater at the studios. It's not there anymore. Um, I think this one, Shell Game, takes place on the cruise line. And Dark Passage is book six. And the last one is The Insider. And then the one that sort of segues the two series together is called Syndrome. It is told from the perspective of these girls who are not part of the Kingdom Keepers, but they are friends and helpers of the Kingdom Keepers. And I can't even think of what they're... The Fairleys, that's what they're called, the Fairleys. And they have some special powers, and um, they are integral parts of the Kingdom Keeper series. And they, uh, the syndrome is told from their perspective. Okay, so now I've got some more Disney related books up here, and I'm going to move them down to the space that's here. So I'll show you these as I'm moving them. This first series, I think, let me go up here. Um, I think there's maybe six or more in this series now. I've got the first three. I have not read these, but these are beautiful. These are by Serena Valentino or Valentina. And this first one, you can hardly see the title, but it's called Fairest of All. And I've got to figure out a way that I can show you underneath because the dust jacket has, uh, these are all villain stories. I think villain origin stories. The dust jacket has one of their egos or whatever. And then the inside is their alter ego. So let me take the dust jacket off and show you. So here we have the old hag. Pretty cool, huh? And then the next one is The Beast Within. And so, of course, we're going to have the prince there. I don't really consider him a villain. But anyway. And then we have Poor Unfortunate Soul. I definitely had to get this one. I have a long year connection with Ursula. And there's her alter ego. Um... In my many, many years of working at a particular theme park, um, Ursula and I were very, very good friends. All right. Um, Rise of the Isle of the Lost is the first of the... No, that's the third one. I got them in backwards order. <laughs> Isle of the Lost, the first of the Disney Descendants novels by Melissa De La Cruz. The second book is Return. Ah, it's so hard to do this one-handed. Return to the Isle of the Lost. And the third book is Rise of the Isle of the Lost. And then there's a fourth one. It's Purple. I think it's Escape from the Isle of the Lost, maybe? I don't know. Okay, then you may have seen me just haul this fourth book 
in the Peter and the Starcatcher series. I found that on my trip. Uh, I think I got that in Louisiana. But I love the series. I have read all five of these, and now I own four in hardcover. Beautiful hardcover. They are by Dave, per Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson. We have Peter and the Starcatchers. This is a fantastic Peter Pan origin story. Peter and the Shadow Thieves. Beautiful, beautiful books. Peter and the Secret of Rundoon. And then the one I just got, Peter and the Sword of Mercy. I paid less than a dollar for that, and it's in beautiful condition. The fifth one is called Bridge to Neverland, and it takes place, I think, a few years after this one leaves off. Uh, very enjoyable. All right, I've got a couple of other what I consider fantasy type series up here. So, uh, and I also, I think I'd kind of like to include dystopian too. So let me show you just a few other things that I don't consider contemporary and, um, but they are going to stay up on this shelf. So I've got the whole collection of the series of unfortunate events. And I just finished reading those last year in 2020. I actually read all of them, but one in 2020 and have finished those. A lot of them, the first several, I read in print, and then as they started getting longer and I started running out of time, I listened to the last few on audio, and here's book one here. It won't quite fit in the stack. <laughs> I was out of shelf space. Uh, I also have the Spiderwick Chronicles. I've got the main series of five, and then the first one of Beyond Spiderwick Chronicles. I have not read it yet. And then over here, I've got a few other fantasy, fairy tale type series. I have read these, Half Upon a Time, Twice Upon a Time, Once Upon the End. These are by James Riley. I loved these. I did a buddy read of this trilogy with a cost from a cost of a K several years ago, and I just thought they were delightful. It is a fairy tale mashup, and I just, I, I loved them. This is also kind of a fairy tale mashup, and I don't have these in the right order, but this is by Chris Colfer. Uh, the first book is The Wishing Spell. I listened to this on audio not too long ago. Uh, well, it was in 2020. That's the only one I've read of this series. Book two is The Enchantress Returns. Let me get these in the right order. And then book three, A Grim Warning. These are beautiful books. Book four, The Land of Stories, and An Author's Odyssey is book five. There is a book six. It's white. It has something like, the title is like Worlds Colliding. I don't know. That always makes me think of George Costanza from Seinfeld when I see that title. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Worlds Collide. Um, so then that is, well, no, I've got a few up here. Um, let me pull these down because I just was sorting out and I haven't decided exactly how things are going to be organized yet. But I have the Ugly series. It's a dystopian series. I have Uglies, Pretties, Specials doesn't have a dust jacket, so there's nothing to see there. And then Extras. These are by Scott Westerfeld. And I have read the companion book to it, Bogus to Bubbly. So I have finished that series. And I binged this trilogy Last year, a year before, uh, I thought it was really good. Legend by Marie Lou, and then Prodigy, and Champion. I thought it was really good. I want Katie to read those. I think she would enjoy them. And I also finished last year the Shadow Children series. There's seven. I wish I had hard covers of these first two. Among the Hidden. I knew that was going to happen. Among the Betrayed. I think... I think I have these in the right order. Actually, I don't know that I have these in the right order. <laughs> they may not be. Among the Imposters. Among the Barons. Yeah, I don't think these are in the right order. Among the Brave. Among the Free, I think is the last one. Among the Enemy. So yeah, those are totally out of order. I'm sorry. Um, I've got another science fiction series and another dystopian up here. Let me just turn this off and I'll stand up.
All right, these will probably go back down on the other shelf, but I have the whole series, and I've read all of these. The Strange Case of Origami Yoda. I read all these in print. I think they may be available in, on audio, but these are delightful. I love these. Definitely middle grade books. They're so much fun. Darth Paper Strikes Back, The Secret of the Fortune Wookiee, The Surprise Attack of Jabba the Puppet, and these are probably not in the right order either. Princess Label Maker to the Rescue. Uh, this is a... Uh, Kind of an instruction book on folding and doodling. R2-D2's Guide to Folding and Doodling. Also very good. And the last one, Emperor Pickle Teen Rides the Bus. The Origami Yoda series is just so much fun. I really love them. I don't have the first one of the of this series, but I really enjoy it. This is the City of Ember series, or the Book of Ember. The first book is the City of Ember, which I really like. There's a movie of it, and um, I really enjoyed the book. I've read it and People of Sparks twice. The third book is The Diamond of Darkhold, and the fourth book is The Prophet of Yonwood. And so I've, I have read those. Now here's a trilogy I have not read. And, uh, well, I take that back. I've read the first one, but I'd have to reread it. The Apothecary by Miley Malloy. This was a Sunshine State book when Katie was in sixth grade, and um, I later found the other two. I don't know if these are in the right order. The Apprentices is... Um, I think the sequel, and then I think this is the third one, The After Room, but I won't swear to it. Anyway, but I'm pretty sure it's just a trilogy. All right, I think everything else, well, you might consider the borrower's fantasy. <laughs> there probably would be fantasy. I've got the first one in mass market paperback, so it's in a different stack, but uh, the borrower's a loft, a float, and a field, and then I have the original borrowers. I have not read those. So that, I think, is everything middle grade, YA, or adult that is fantasy, sci-fi, dystopian, you know, unrealistic, basically, is kind of what the theme I was going for in this video. Oh, I do have a few over here that are either standalones or I don't have the whole series. Um, we actually do have the Hunger Games books, and they are in Katie's room or on her shelf. But this is just a parody book. Uh, this is not the... There's two different Hunger Pains books, and one of them is a graphic novel, which is terrible, in my opinion. This one is not... Uh, this one is text, and uh, it's an actual parody story. Katie started reading it several years ago, and she said, Mom, this is so dumb. I said, well, that's kind of the idea with parodies. So one of these days, I will get this read. I have not read this by Robin McKinley, Rose Daughter. Someone gave me this. Uh, I know this has been a booktube darling um, over the years, An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir, I think is how you say her name. I have read this one by Robin McKinley, Spindle's End. And this was a gift from the nurses when Emily was in the hospital. It's book three of a series, though. I need to find the other two by Charlie Fletcher. It's called Silver Tongue. Don't know anything about it. I bought this at BookNet Fest a few years ago, Brightly Burning by Alexa Dunn. She usually attends BookNet Fest and is one, you know, on panels and things. Uh, the Extraordinary Adventures of Alfred Krupp by Rick Yancey. I have not read this. I have read the first book. Um, oh, goodness. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The trilogy of his. I've read the first one, and I didn't love it, so I didn't go ahead and read anymore. Someone gave me this. This is really, I think, more of a mystery. Well, maybe it's a dystopian. H2O. It's in the rain, and just one drop will kill you. Ooh, by Virginia Bergen. That does sound kind of... It says it's creepy and realistic. So, yeah, that does sound kind of good. Uh, this one is Supernatural, I think, with a... Um, it's more faith-based. House by Frank Peretti and Ted Decker. The only way out is in. I don't know anything about it. This was another gift from the nurses when Emily was in the hospital. The Crowns of Crosswald. Is that how you say it? Crosswald by D.E. Knight. I'm supposed to read this this year. Um... The author was just asking me about it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I already have a copy, and uh, I need to uh, I need to read that. And then Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. I don't know anything about this one. I got this at a library sale quite a while back. All right, uh, you might want to see what other fantasy books we have on Katie's shelf, so I might go ahead and put that here and then come back and do a sign. Okay, so it's actually the next day. I didn't have any more filming time yesterday, but uh, today I'm in the living room in the bottom shelf of Katie's china cabinet. This had been my mother's china cabinet. It came complete with 
some crystal that she collected and things like that. Katie was only four when my mom died, but at the time she had been kind of infatuated with the pretty things in the china cabinet, and so my mom wanted her to have it. So we have moved it all the way here from Oklahoma uh, a few years ago, and because Katie still doesn't have a bookshelf in her room, we sort of just started collecting some of her books in this bottom shelf. Now, since she has a room, she does have a closet where she has most of her book collection, and uh, they're just not on shelves. And I'm not going to go in her closet today and show you her books because they're really just boxed up in a bin and a box and all that. But there are a couple of things out here that represent some of her books, and this is just kind of a sampling. So, she does have the whole Harry Potter collection in the original paperbacks. She didn't read Harry Potter till middle school, but I was able to find all of these in the same editions for her after she got interested in reading them. She also does have the four illustrated editions that are out there in her closet or maybe just somewhere in her room because she had started rereading Harry Potter in those editions, but we, um, she has the whole set in the paperback. Then I can say we have the whole collection of Lunar Chronicles. I have bought these and have read most of them. She's read most of them and I keep them on her shelf really because I don't have room for them on my shelves, but I sort of consider them ours. We have, um, you won't see Cinder here because it's loaned out to one of her friends. And if we don't get it back, it's fine. I'll just get another one at some point. And there are a few Rick Riordan books here. Most of our Rick Riordan collection are in her closet. I have bought most of them and really kind of had her in mind when I bought them because I listened to most of them on audio the ones that are out here, these two are the two that I have read most recently. The Last of the King Chronicles, Serpent Shadow, and Burning Maze, which is book three in Trials of Apollo. I still need to read the last two of those. Or did I read the fourth one? I don't know. And then here's just a few companion books. Demigod Files, uh, Demigod Diaries, Demigods and Monsters. Okay, then this is a series of the first three of the... Last Survivors by Susan Beth Pfeffer. The fourth one is on my staging shelf right now. These are books that Katie has probably read at least three times, and I'm reading or hope to read the fourth one uh, this year, maybe even this month. I don't know. And then I put these in here because I'm done with them, and I thought she might be interested in them. It's the Ink Heart Trilogy. They're really pretty covers. And this is kind of a fairy tale comes to life sort of trilogy and then a kind of science fiction trilogy this is book two alone by scott sigler the uh, third one or no i'm sorry this is book three alone the second one is a light the first one's called alive i've just bought those for her recently she's read all of them i've read all of them and i found those two at book sales and um picked them up so i've kind of got my eye out for the first one so that she can have those. Uh, then in the back, uh, she does have the whole um, Maze Runner collection in a box set. And then her aunt gave her that hardcover. That's actually just the cover because the book itself is loaned out. But it's separate um, from her box set. She's got the box set and she's got Scorch Trials. It was kind of funny because she had wanted Scorch Trials the movie for Christmas. And she put that on her Christmas list one year. And so her aunt, knowing that she's a big reader, got her Scorch Trials the book. And she was like, oh no, I should have been more specific. <laughs> so anyway, so she's got two copies of Scorch Trials. Uh, Percy Jackson's Greek Gods that I found like at Dollar General for $3 or something. And uh, it was a pretty amazing find. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure she's read that too. And she's got the whole Warrior series. I'm not sure why this one book is out here, but she's got, well, I say the whole Warrior series. There's a lot, and she has a lot. That was her favorite middle school series. So uh, they're all in her closet as well. Uh, here's a copy of The Hobbit. She started reading that one time because I love it so much, and her dad has read them all. And um, I don't know if she ever got through 
the whole thing or not. Um, but anyway, she's got a copy of it here. And then she had to read The Handmaid's Tale for school. And I gave her just my old ratty copy that I had gotten at our library book sale. Someday we'll get a better copy of that. But uh, her and I both like The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, a couple more down here that uh, I'll put back. Uh, she used to really enjoy the Once Upon a Time TV show. In fact, she got me to watch some of it. So I bought those for her. I don't think she's ever read the books. And I don't know if she'll keep them around much longer. But they were in here. And this is one that I remember her getting maybe at the Scholastic Book Fair in middle school. Contaminated by M. Garner. I think I started it, but I don't know if I ever finished it. I need to. And then we are both fans of the Giver Quartet. I found this copy of Sun not too long ago and stuck it in here. I don't know if she's ever read Sun, but she's read the other three. And um, I have read all of them. So anyway, those are here. She did have a few other books that were in here. This was such a jumble, and I got in here and sort of straightened up a little bit before filming this and so there are a few other books that I will put back in here that are nonfiction and some animal related books and things like that but for this video we were just doing fantasy so or and dystopian that type of thing so um I wanted to show you what she has here she also has the whole Hunger Games collection uh she's got the a Divergent box set and I mentioned the Maze Runner um, Warriors, those, and all the Rick Riordan books. Those are all in her closet. So we've got a pretty good selection of fantasy books. Um, you know, a lot of the standard ones that you would think. And, uh, and I've read almost everything that's in here. There's just a handful that I have not read. So I will probably go back to my filming spot now and sign off. Actually, I put those away, and now I can't think of anything else I really need to show you for this video. So I guess I'll just sign off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book, and God bless you.